Okay. Seems like we're okay now. There are no dropped frames. Okay, I think I can carry on, guys. Let's try this music situation out again. Good. <laughs> okay, I'll carry on then. We gooch. music might cut out but that's fine I'll carry on I don't need that all right guys welcome to the stream cooking with Kate I don't know what episode this is maybe 12 so that's pretty great and wellness Wednesday today so making a bunch of stuff from scratch because that's what makes us feel good we are going to make pesto chicken pasta. I'm not making the pasta from scratch because I had a bunch to use up from the pantry. But we are gonna make the ricotta cheese. That'll be fun, super easy. And then ratatouille. So we have like a French and Italian mix going down today. Even though ratatouille has like a bunch of Italian flavors too. So that's why I kind of paired these things together. Our timeline, the pasta will take like max 30 minutes to make, even with the chicken. And the ratatouille will probably take 30 minutes as well in the oven. But the ricotta, you need like at least an hour and a half just to make it because it strains for an hour. You could also like make the ricotta the day before if you feel like you don't have time. And onto the ingredients. We don't have too, too many today. So chicken of choice. I bought whole ones again, just so I can break them down. You know I like doing that. And then also you can choose whatever pasta you want. I'm gonna do a mix of linguine and spaghetti. And then pesto. So I'm using a jar up that was in the fridge. But if you want to make your own, feel free. I'll tell you how to do that later. And then just a little bit of Parmesan cheese to mix into the sauce. I think that'll be good. And then for our ricotta, we're gonna do a mix of milk. So two liters of that. And then you can use cream or half and half. I have half and half here. So I'm gonna use a cup of that. If you don't have either of those though, that's okay. Just your ricotta won't be as creamy tasting, but it'll still be delicious. Oh, music's back. Crazy interwebs. And then, okay, I'm just gonna turn that off because that's annoying. And then what we're gonna use to like make the cheese coagulate is some lemon juice and salt. And then to strain the ricotta, we're gonna need some cheesecloth. So make sure you have that on hand before you go to make this cheese. Otherwise, you'll probably strain it all down the drain. You need something really fine to catch all of the curd. And then I think I'm gonna garnish the pasta with some pumpkin seeds. I'm gonna toast them up. Yeah, maybe an onion. That's in the ratatouille though. I haven't got there yet. 
So yeah, pumpkin seeds for the pasta garnish and also some balsamic glaze. If you don't have this made or you can buy it, you can just reduce some balsamic vinegar until it's nice and syrupy. Yeah, you're too excited. Ratatouille. I'm doing my own little version today. I chose not to include eggplant in it just because I find it gets too watery and mushy. So I have zucchini, bell peppers, tomatoes, and I'm also gonna throw some sun-dried tomatoes in. Some onion, so I'll probably only use half an onion for this. Nothing too crazy. And then this is your choice, but I like to do a little bit of tomato sauce on the bottom, make it nice and saucy. And then the herbs to season that are basil and thyme. Either fresh or dried works. So history time. Ratatouille is a French Provençal stewed vegetable dish that originated in Nice. In French terms, the name simply means a coarse stew. So none of the vegetables are really chopped up, like really pretty. You just kind of throw everything in a pan and cook it together. So that's your zucchini, bell peppers, tomatoes, and eggplant, and onion. It definitely wasn't a very fancy dish as it is now. So the modern version, which we're gonna make, consists of tomatoes as a foundation. And then you can mix in garlic, onions, zucchini, eggplant, peppers, and herbs. But that version didn't even appear in any print until 1930. Whereas like the original one was done from the 1800s and onwards. According to the La Russe Gastronomique, the culinary dictionary, the vegetables should all be cooked separately and then combined and cooked slowly together to form like a nice, rich and smooth stew. So we are going to take it one step further today and make a version called Confit Bialdi. Really weird, I didn't even know it was called this until I looked it up. Instead of just cutting all the veg up together and cooking it, we're gonna do a traditional style and we're gonna layer them thin. So we're gonna slice all the vegetables really thin on a mandolin and then layer them all really nicely in a pan together. And that'll give a really nice composition to the dish and it looks so nice with all the different colors. That's the way I like to do it. So it's a little bit more fancy. And onto the ricotta. So it's a super easy process, but you always need to give it time to drain. So you're draining the whey from the curd. And keep in mind, the longer that you drain it, the drier that your cheese will be. So there's a couple different types of ricotta that you'll find in the supermarket. Usually there's both a wet and a dry one. I don't know what you guys have over there though. And ricotta is just a traditional Italian cheese that can be made from sheeps, cow, goat, or water buffalo. The name literally means recooked and is made by first making the whey acidic, so we're adding the lemon juice, and then it's heated to near boiling point. And that's when you'll really start to see the curd separate from the whey. Yeah, I think the dry one probably lasts a little bit longer as well, Amy's. And then the combination of the low pH and the high temperature denatures the proteins and then you get your cheese separated from the liquid. Then we are gonna separate it and pass it through the cheesecloth and let it drain, super simple. And the production of ricotta actually dates all the way back to the Bronze Age. It makes sense though, because it's a very simple cheese to make. And the fresh cheese lost its fame once aged cheeses started in production. So ricotta is actually pretty perishable and it was too hard to keep fresh at all times back then. I'm sure they didn't have fridges like we do now. But you can find them in the supermarket now and with some preservatives that they put in it now, it usually lasts about a month in the fridge. So ricotta has come a long way. Lastly, we'll chat a little bit about pesto since I won't be making it today, boo, but I have to use it out of the fridge. Yeah, there was no fridge tours. The sauce originated in Genoa, Italy, going as far back as the Roman age. So that's a really old sauce. And it traditionally consists of crushed garlic, pine nuts, 
salt, basil, parm cheese or pecorino, so stinky cheeses. And then that's all blended together with olive oil. There is a French version, it's called Pistou, and that one doesn't have any nuts in it. So that's good to know for anyone that's allergic to nuts. It probably won't taste the same, but it'll, it's still delicious. <laughs> yeah. That would be hilarious. Pure entertainment would, that stream would be. So the pesto that I'm using, that I got from the store, doesn't have any nuts, which is why I'm gonna garnish the pasta with some toasted pumpkin seeds instead. Okay, order of preparation, since we're a little bit behind now. So first thing we're gonna do is make the ricotta. Then we're gonna portion out our chicken. Since I bought, <laughs> leprosy giveaway. Since I bought whole chickens, but feel free to buy boneless, skinless breasts or whatever you want. Then the next thing after that, where you have to build the ratatouille and put it into the oven to bake. And while that's baking, we can cook the pasta ahead of time so it's ready to be put into our sauce. And then after that, we'll cook the chicken and then start to assemble our pasta. And then after that, I get to plate it all up and you guys get to watch me eat it and not smell it at all. Suckas. All right, I'm getting started. It's very quiet without the music. The YouTube keeps cutting out. Our internet is terrible today. Let's see if it'll work again. I'll try one more time. So I'm gonna turn this just because I didn't have anything set up. Terrible. And then I'll get all my other stuff out once my cheese is going. So big pot here. And I'm gonna get two liters of milk and a cup of the half and half as well as a lemon. Boom. <laughs> no, <laughs> music shuts off again. Thanks world for nothing today. I can't even turn my settings down more. Everything's at 720 instead of 1080 already. So we're already low, low. So I have a 2% milk, but feel free to use like a whole milk, which is a little bit higher in fat. And then we're only gonna get about two cups of cheese out of this. So you don't get much cheese, but it is really delicious. Buffman Dan, today I am making a pesto chicken pasta. Right now I am just, <laughs> yeah, cooking mess. I am getting homemade ricotta going in this pot. And then we have to assemble a really nice layered ratatouille after that. Doing a little uh, French-Italian fusion today. My cream.
Then I have to add a teaspoon of salt and three tablespoons of lemon juice. Oh, I can cook cheese toasties. But I don't know if anyone cooks better toasties than the Thai people. They have them at 7-Eleven and they saved my life many a times. Yeah, it's the easiest thing. You gotta get like the old school press that like separates the bread into the triangles for you. So much better. <laughs> of course, Breville is the best one. All right, my peeps, I'm gonna add this lemon juice to the pot. And then as this comes up to temp, you're gonna see the curds start to form. No, I am not. Happily taken. <laughs> I've never had nonstick coating come off on my toasty. That's right, Annie's straight up marinated. You just said you know how to cook a toasty. I don't need to do that. I need to teach you how to make different stuff. I'm just gonna use a whisk for this. And then just give your milk a stir every now and then, just so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And you don't have to go on super high heat. Mine's on about medium. You guys are cray. Okie dokes, ricotta is going. Next thing up, chicken. Amy's favorite part. I don't know what to do, Anies. Are you gonna let them steal your fire like that? would destroy you. You don't it? Sounds good. Sounds good, my man. I don't need to, I can just tell by the way that you're talking.
<laughs> the fluffiest. Man, he's digital and retro. <laughs> well, I'm gonna turn it down now. So you have Tourette's then if you like, you're doing things without even trying? You got like a nervous twitch or something? The moistest. Oma, he doesn't have a very good squat correct, does he? Nothing like yours. Or Amy's. With the cheesecloth. Never. Partners for life. Oh, we've already had this conversation. It's not a thing. Vegans don't exist much in our lives. I mean, hey, if that's why you're watching a cooking stream, then by all means, you get off on that. I'm all for any windows, but if you start getting gross, I'm gonna remove you, just so you know. <laughs> and he's like waiting for it. <laughs> he's like, I'll just stay quiet. Why is there always two of you at once anyways? Like you can't do anything on your own? So there's my strainer set up guys. You should be, sir. Show some respect to women. Man, 
And if that's how you're complimenting girls, well, no wonder that you're single. I'm just gonna stir my pot over here and carry on with this chicken destruction. No. I don't know where you're from, but I feel like you just weren't raised right. How, like, how good does that look, Anies? That's so pro. There's, like, no meat even left on there. So all I'm doing is just following the breastbone here to debone it. If you wanna save the carcass for soup, that's always a good idea. Yeah, the thickest. Amy's Mama Sita is watching this and she is laughing right now. This is a good joke for us, for sure. Yeah, I know, I've been to the UK. But I went there on my own, and honestly, I never dealt with, with people like you. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is take off the chicken wings. Anies, did you know, notice that I have a different knife here again today? This is my boning knife. Just getting a little steamy now. It's just so easy with one button. It's just so easy. Almost too easy. Can I get some onions up in the chat for all these trolls today, please? Give them a nice warm welcome. That's right. I'm just gonna hope that he's like a young kid because if he's an adult, then I just feel bad for him. But carrying on with our fun today. Mayo's gone bad. <laughs>
Boom. We're sliding around. We're wild today. Two chickens, my man. I don't even know if I'll need all of them. But I'm just going to take them apart and probably freeze a couple different pieces. That way it's just done. I know. Terrible ratios, always. Like, how do these Canadians cook anyways, right? At least tell me that you actually learn how to take apart a chicken from this. What is this, the second, third time that I've done it on stream already? Remember I used to have races in the kitchen of who could take apart their chicken faster. I think I'm just gonna use the chicken breasts for the pasta today, but I'm also gonna cook up some legs for the leftovers tomorrow. Check on this cheese. Okay, steaming just a little bit. <laughs> and I get you a chicken. <sighs> Honestly, I could probably, if I wasn't like taking it off the bone and stuff, probably do a chicken in five minutes. Like just pulling it apart into the different sections like breasts, thighs and leg and then wings. But it probably wouldn't be as like nice, right? Like I might make some mistakes. So I like doing it on stream. I can go nice and slow. Make sure you guys catch everything. And honestly, like the best part of the chicken is like this little oyster right here on the back. So if you're ever eating a whole chicken, always eat that first. It's like the most moist piece. So I am going to save those chicken carcasses because I'll make a soup one day. Yeah, there's quite a bit of prep and cleaning. The wings, honestly, are super good if you marinate them and then grill them or even just bake them in the oven. You could do them whole like that. Just make sure you get the skin really nice and crispy. Just washing my hands. And then I'm gonna check out our cheese. And you know what? I still have to do a sous vide stream. That'll teach you some new stuff. They're actually pretty reasonable to buy. I think the cheapest one is around $100. It's like a slow cooker, but better because it seals in all of the juices. We like to do sausages that way and they, they don't shrink. Sous vide. really fun to use. I'm 
the Suze Avida, aka sealing meat or anything in a bag and then cooking it in a water bath at a set temperature. So that's the best feature is that it stays at one temperature the whole time. Like you can cook a steak in there and have it come out perfect medium rare and then just sear it in a pan. And it'll be like really nice and beautiful and pink on the inside. You could also do eggs. The eggs are really interesting because the white stays very nice and soft. And then obviously the yolk stays soft too. But usually the white cooks so much faster, right? So it has all, all the extra protein in it. <laughs> You're crazy. Okay. Chicken carcasses going away right now. They do make great steak. Okay, so here's all of our lovely chicken ready to go. That is very interesting. Okay, ricotta is almost there. Next thing we got to do is prep all of our veg for our ratatouille. So I'm just going to set the chicken aside for now. That's okay to chill out there. We're going to cook it all. I just got a, another favorite tool, so my mandolin. And I'm gonna use that today to slice all the veg really nice and thin. That way it's all the same size, so it'll cook perfectly. You don't want like soggy peppers and then crunchy zucchini. Just one note, always be really careful when using this. I've seen people slice pieces of their finger off. It's not fun. What, the mandolin? is almost boiling. Just going to grab the veg real quick. mandolin they're so cheap they're like what 20 bucks on amazon okay so i have two like really big squash instead of the small ones i think that'll be enough once we mix in all the other things
And then you're gonna wanna use a pan with quite a bit of surface area, just so you can spread out the layers really nice. Yeah, she does. I guess medium sized tomatoes here if you want you can use cherry tomatoes too just cut them in half I might throw in a couple I'll see how my layers look it is so close after that raid yesterday and that got me so pumped up And I still have 13 days until like my 30 days is up to get the affiliate. So I think I'm gonna do it. Not wearing a glove, not scared. I'm gonna do a test slice. So, that's about, what, a quarter inch thick, I would say. I think that's a good thickness. So I'm gonna keep it set there. I mean, by all means, go thicker if you want. Thick. But then it'll just take a little bit longer to cook. We're close, we're close. Hello, Lane, how are you today? Nice to see you. I'm just gonna turn this down so you can watch me slice. Slice and dice. You could use a knife too. Just, I wanted to use this because I haven't used it in a long time. To me, this is fun, not scary. Just gotta be confident. Obviously, once it gets to the end, don't, don't risk it. Hello, Nick. Welcome to the stream. Just doing some dinner prep today. We're doing Italian French fusion. I'm working on my ratatouille now. And we have ricotta almost ready in the pot on the stove. We're just about to strain it. <laughs> right on time. says what's up. Slicing it thin makes it look like there's so much more. Like I was kind of worried that I wouldn't have enough, but I'm definitely going to have enough.
But I am just gonna cut this little end so it stays the same thickness. And then I don't know if it's sharp enough to do these tomatoes, but I'm gonna try. Nope. They're too ripe. That's okay. Actually, I'm gonna cut these a little bit thicker just because they're so much more delicate than the squash and the peppers. And then also don't worry about the little butt ends because that'll cook up really nice. You don't have to throw that out. gonna get rid of this board for a sec so I can strain that in front of you. I know look at my little mise en place here. Hopefully I don't pour this everywhere. See how lumpy it is? It's so lumpy. Spilling off the edge. And then don't worry really about like pushing that down because it'll slowly strain out over time. And then I just have like a little bit left over in the bottom. So I'll just scrape that out. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. Okay, we got cheese. So it's already straining out quite a bit. And then you'll see how much liquid you actually get from that. So think about how much liquid is like wasted from milk when you make cheese. It's not a very sustainable process, I guess, but it's so delicious. And then I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm not gonna put it in the fridge quite yet. I'll put it in the fridge once everything has strained out. I might have to actually pour it into another bowl. This is a deadly meal. Yeah. Why wouldn't the bowl work? She's scared. So that was just from the lemon and salt. Like you can easily make a cheese that way, just with milk. And to be honest, I've never used whey much like after I've strained it from anything. I don't know if there's other uses for that at all. Oh, actually, maybe, have you ever heard of like milk braised pork? Maybe you could use it in something like that. 
I've never done that though. Just need our peppers now. So I have some baby ones. And I'm just going to cut the core out from the top and then slice them on the mandolin so I get nice rounds. But I am running out of room over here. This much. Yeah. for any newbies that want to see my prep. There we go. Vaders, what is up? Sounds good, Amy's. You go get some rest. I feel bad making you stay up late every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not going to layer quite yet because I want to put tomato sauce in the bottom of the pan. How's your eating been, Vaders? Yeah, ratatouille. The fancy version that Thomas Keller does. So this is how I'm coring my peppers today. And then I'm just gonna tap out all the seeds. Oh my God, I love that movie so much. I wish I had a little rat that could like prep food for me overnight. Yes, sir. See you tomorrow. It's gonna be fun. That sounds delicious. Did you guys just get that smoker? I saw the ribs the other day as well. They look so good. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get in trouble for using it? Cause it looks like you guys kind of live in an apartment, yeah? So we had a smoker too. We still have the big green egg. And we had that in Vancouver with us on in our apartment on the patio. And someone actually called the fire department one day because they thought our unit was on fire. And then the firefighters came up and they saw the pork shoulder. It was still in the brine. And they're like, oh, is that for dinner? And we're like, yeah. They're like, OK, we'll come back later. <laughs> And they didn't even do anything because like our smoke detector didn't go off or anything.
Just someone stupid pulled the alarm. And then after that, we got like a nasty letter in the mail saying that if we used it again, they would fine us $200. But we still used it and nothing happened. We're not scared. Everyone's just jealous of the smell. That's all that is. Okay, last pepper. Like it's, it's such a mild smoke smell compared to like burning an actual fire. Like it smells good when you're cooking the meat on there. It's not a gross, harsh smoke smell. That's what I don't get. <laughs> right? Especially when you're doing a long smoke and you just like have to wait all day and smell that. It's not fair. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut these peppers into nice rounds so that we can layer them in between the zucchini and the tomato. And once again, I'm not doing eggplant in this just because I find it gets a little bit too soggy. What? That sounds amazing. It's like the one movie I still have on DVD. Oh, posh snack. Yeah, I feel like you either love food from like when you were a kid or you just like don't really care about it that much. But like you can always tell who really loves food because they never stop talking about it. Okay, I still have to fit my onion on here. But I'm gonna do one layer right now. So maybe I can get all of this into the frame-ish. So I'm gonna do a layer of tomato sauce on the bottom. I'm not making it, sorry guys, but I had a jar in the fridge that I wanna use up. And then I'll put the onion in the second layer or the top layer of the ratatouille so it gets like a nice brown on top as well instead of just staying really nice and soft. And this sauce is just organic tomato basil so just really simple. So I'll just shake that around. And then we're gonna build our layers. I think I'm gonna do two peppers, just cause they're pretty small. I'm gonna cook this in the oven. So I think I'm gonna do around like 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And that should cook it pretty perfectly. 
You can go lower and like let it stew longer. You might get a richer flavor that way. But I like to cook everything kind of all at once and have it ready. So I'm gonna try out this way. But like traditionally, you would make all your layers and then cover it with parchment and bake it really slow so the veg steams and then take off the parchment and let it brown up a bit. But I don't want my stuff like too, too soft. So I'm gonna do a quick roast at a high heat and see what happens. I don't know why, but this is like really mesmerizing right now. There's just so many colors. Yeah, roasted veggies are like so good to just always have on hand. Great little snack. And I love when they get such nice char on them too. So I'm gonna do the bottom layer, just zucchini down here. And then I'll do a couple layers with the peppers and tomatoes. I know, this is fun. My OCD is so happy. And if you can find yellow squash too, that gives another really nice contrast. Okay. <laughs> Looks good to me. Stick that little guy in there. That was the first layer. Hello, Yahtzee. Welcome back. Good to see you in here again. Okay, so next layer, I said I wanted to cut up some onion to throw in the mix, add some sweetness. Just going to clear some space. I was just too lazy to put this stuff in a bowl because I didn't want to create like so many dishes. I got my half an onion here. So the first layer Yahtzee is just a bed of tomato sauce, not super thick, like maybe a quarter of an inch the way up the pan. Yes, so that is what I'm making Vader's, confit by Aldi. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's like the really modern, like fancy French version. Where's my knife hiding? And then I'm just going to julienne the onion really thin. And then we can just sprinkle a layer of that over before we do the second layer with the squash, peppers, and tomato. I probably won't even need all of this. And then if you have time, by all means, like saute this up first, get it nice and caramelized. That'll add a lot of good flavor to it. And I'm still on the fence if I want to add garlic or not. Okay, hey, here we go again. I might run out of tomatoes. And 
and also sorry it's so quiet today my internet is being terrible i can't even load up youtube to play music but i'm powering through and still streaming with like all the settings turned down Do, do, do. I feel like I'm on a roll now. Start it over. Actually, Vader's, so they, act, they use the French Laundry cookbook in that movie. I just read about that today. And I was like, what? I didn't know that. I don't know if you guys have ever been to one of Keller's restaurants. But I was able to go to Bouchon in Vegas. And it was seriously the best brunch of my life. I still dream about those truffle fries. Almost there. If you have like extra zucchini, just save it for something else. Be creative and use it up. Don't just throw it out. Because I'm definitely going to have extra. I'll probably just saute it up really quick tomorrow and use it for lunch. That's the plan. Okay. That looks super good. <laughs> There's my extra veg. But this, though, looks fab. So I can move this back over. This was like the hardest thing to make today. Everything else is gonna be super quick. And then I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil on top of there and definitely give a good amount of salt and pepper because that's a lot of veggies and we need to make sure we season it really well so it doesn't taste bland. It does look really good on camera, doesn't it? I'm gonna do a healthy dose of olive oil, let's just be honest. I don't want it to get dried out at all. And then that's just gonna create like an amazing sauce at the bottom. If I wanted to get really picky, I would have salted throughout every layer. But this will be enough. Especially if you season your tomato sauce at the bottom. And then when this cooks, all of the salty juice from the top is gonna to penetrate the stuff below it and we should be great to go. So I'm just gonna put that aside and then let's check our ricotta real quick. So it looks like it's all strained out almost. So this is where we're at. That looks so good. Just like rolling into itself. And I'm gonna taste it as well. Mm. So ricotta is always a little bit more sweet than the hard cheeses. So feel free to add extra salt 
Once it's cooled down though, so I'm gonna pop this into the fridge just so it's cooled down by the time we eat it later. And then there's a little bit of whey left over. And this amount of cheese, I got this from two liters of milk and a cup of cream or half and half. So you only get about two cups of cheese from that much milk. It's, it's a little bit of a waste, but it's really fun to make. And then this veg is just gonna go in a Ziploc real quick. And then we're gonna carry on. So next thing, yeah, boiled squash is nasty. Ratatouille is definitely one of my favorite ways to prepare it. I also like making zucchini boats. So cut your zucchini in half, long way, and then hollow it out and fill it with like tomatoes and feta and balsamic and then roast that in the oven. It gets super nice and crispy as well. But there is a fine line between like overly mushy squash always. Most people do overcook it. And then it just tastes like water. Okay, so ETA on our food right now. I already did my chicken. So I'm gonna say those pieces will take about 15 minutes to cook in the pan. And then pasta, we're gonna cook that before we cook the chicken just so it's ready to go and we can just add it into the sauce. Make sure you save some of the pasta water because that makes your sauce amazingly silky. And then while the ratatouille's in, I can toast my pumpkin seeds at the same time. And then once all of that is cooked, I'll heat up my pesto real quick in another pan with the pasta water, add my pasta, give that a toss, and then I can plate everything. So a little bit of prep for today, but everything will come together really quick later on. So what I'm gonna do is turn on my oven. I'm gonna do a convect bake at 400. And then while that is heating, I'll get my pot for the pasta water going. I'm using linguine and spaghetti today. So I'm gonna cook those noodles separately. I just wanted to use them up though out of the pantry. And then I'll do another stream one day where we make pasta together. It's really fun to roll out. Okay, I'm gonna wash out my ricotta pot real quick just so I don't make more dishes. I wonder what would happen if you cook the pasta in the whey. Like the leftover liquid from the ricotta. Would it work? Yeah. 
Yahtzee, you should definitely give it a try. Important thing for pasta water, always salt it. Make it taste like the sea. My little Catelli pastas today. Okay, I can turn the cam back to the stove again because that chicken's not alive anymore. It's not really doing much. Beauty. I am going to boil mine for about eight minutes. That's usually the perfect amount of time for any pasta that's dried, but I always do check it before I take it out. And welcome to the stream, young. So I did three good spoonfuls of salt in there. Then I'm just going to grab a little strainer because I'm not going to pour out the pasta water since I'm doing two different pastas. So I'll take the one out, put it onto a sheet pan to cool, and then I'll do the other one right after. That way I can cook them both perfectly and then mix them afterwards. So this little guy should do the trick. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do, I can season the chicken and get it ready to cook. I like mine a little crunchy, so al dente. Sounds good, Maya, or Mia. Yeah, young Mises, Mia. Yeah, I always cook my pasta al dente, especially if I'm gonna mix it into a sauce after. That way, by the time the sauce cooks out, your pasta should have soaked a little bit up and brought it to the perfect amount of cooked, I guess, or texture. Very important. You don't want those Italians to yell at you. And don't rinse off your pasta either after you pour it out. I always just toss mine with a little bit of olive oil so it doesn't stick to itself. If you rinse it, then you're gonna rinse all, rinse all of the starches off and that's what makes your sauce really good. So that's a no-no. my little pasta station set up, Mia. Yeah, a lot of people do overlook that part. And then you go to eat it and it's kind of just like soggy and mushy. And then you get sad. <laughs> I'm gonna put a lid on this just so it comes up to temp a little bit faster. And then let's check out our chicken. Okay, I'm gonna use tongs just so I don't have to keep washing my hands. But I took apart a chicken earlier 
So I have it all separated into legs and thighs together and then wings. And the breasts are deboned. So I'm gonna cook the chicken breasts for the pasta today. And maybe stick a couple of the thighs in the pan just for leftovers tomorrow. I'm just gonna spread these out so I can season up the skin really nice. And you'll get a lot more flavor if you leave the skin on your chicken when you cook it. That's what browns up really nice. And I didn't want to coat this in the pesto just so that I wouldn't burn in the pan because herbs tend to burn really fast. So I'm going to keep the chicken plain and then let you mix it with the sauce afterwards. So I'll slice up the chicken breast and put it on top of the pasta. Oh, that would be deadly. At least they like are using the whole animal, right? Like, what's wrong with chicken skin? That's just like a different version of chicharrones. We used to do at the restaurant fried chicken skin with hop salt on it. So we take dried hops and then blend it up with salt. It was really good deadly bar snack to eat with some beer. Yeah, they were good. So I'm definitely getting a good layer of salt on these just because they're so big. People usually tend to under season their meat as well. If you think it's enough, it's usually not enough. I don't work as a chef anymore. I left my last job just before Christmas, just because I wanted to change from the industry I worked like day in and day out for seven years in a kitchen and honestly got just a little bit sick of it. It gets really crazy and stressful a lot of the time. I mean, I do love that rush, but mentally for me, it was just bringing me down, especially in Vancouver. It's really hard to keep a restaurant going there. So I just took a break. Yes, you were no diary. I didn't change a thing. Okay, I'm gonna season up these wings too, and I'm probably just gonna bake them in the oven with the ratatouille, cause why not? So the last restaurant I worked at was actually like a catering kitchen. I only worked there for the Christmas season. It was really fun. We made about like $4 million in a month just for doing catered meals for people in Vancouver. But before that, I was at a brew pub in Vancouver. I helped open it and I worked there for three years as the pastry set chef slash sous chef. And then they ended up bringing in like a consultant's company and things just went like downhill really fast. Within eight months, like the whole crew had left and it was just my boyfriend and I left kind of holding things together. And then we were, we were just like, I don't know, I don't think things are getting better. So then we left. It was super sad because like we worked so hard there for three years to make it what it was. And then they tried bringing in a company to make more money. And that actually was the demise of the restaurant. But hey, everything happens for a reason and now I'm here.
That's my little story. Okay, water is almost there. Boom, oven is ready. So, if you want to look up the brewery Vader's, it's called Big Rock. And it's a brewery based out of Calgary in Canada. And it's actually the biggest microbrewery in Canada. And the first one. So they were like a pioneer. I am doing nothing right now. I am trying to do this. So I've given myself six months to kind of get this streaming thing going. And I'm just at three weeks in. And so far it's going really good. I'm pretty positive of how how this work is going so far. So Ratatouille is going in. I'm gonna set a half an hour timer for that. I actually do have a beer here. This is my favorite one that they ever made. Called Midnight Rap City, and it's a dark ale with like a fruit concentrate put into it. Super, super delicious. Like you would never think that it's a dark ale because it honestly tastes like juice. And it's really good to do like an ice cream float with. My schedule right now, Mia, is Sunday to Thursday, and I usually start about 3 p.m. PST. Trying to do it five days a week consistently and just see how that goes. And I am only seven followers away from my affiliate right now, so I'm getting close. Okay, next thing we need to do is get those pumpkin seeds onto a sheet pan so we can toast them up. And since our oven's at 400, that should be perfect. Thank you, Mia, for the follow. I appreciate that. I know I get a lot of you Europeans watching me all the time. I know it's late over there, but Thank you. So one little trick when you're keeping your nuts around the house, that sounds hilarious, but I like to keep them in the freezer. They stay really fresh that way. Just a little trick. And I just have like little pumpkin seeds or pepitas. I'm just gonna toast these up and then chop them to garnish the pasta with. Just because the pesto I'm using doesn't have pine nuts, but I still wanted that nutty flavor in there. And these are salted, so I don't have to salt them after. Yeah, so this way they stay nice and fresh. And then it doesn't take them very long to thaw out either because they're small, right? So those are gonna go in. I'm gonna check them every couple of minutes. Once they come up to temp, they tend to toast really fast. So you always wanna catch them before they start to burn. Oh, 
Oh yeah, perfect timing. Water is boiling. I'm gonna drop the pasta in. And also Mia, I always just read the box for the cooking instructions. So this one says nine minutes. So let's see if they are correct. You're crazy singles. This is a cooking stream, not a flexing stream. Look at my old videos of where I'm wearing a tank top. That'll give you just as much satisfaction. You wouldn't be ready for this flex in real life anyways. So I'm going to put a seven minute timer on because that's probably been in there for already a minute and we're going to go from there. And then while that's cooking, I can get my pesto out. So I'm sure that you guys have this as well, this brand. This has been in the fridge for a while, so I thought I should use that up before I make some fresh stuff. And then just so you know, there is no nuts in this one. So it's not gonna have the same flavor as like a traditional pesto. This would be called a pisto, which is a French version. I have. It's very easy. I always just make it in the blender, Mia. Throw your basil and garlic and cheese and a little bit of lemon juice in there and then you just blend it up with olive oil. And obviously you can add on any nuts to it that you want. You don't have to do pine nuts because they are very strong in flavor. seeds and then they're good to go it is very easy so hopefully I'm gonna break some barriers for you and you can start doing the scary things at home and honestly Google should be like your best friend whenever you're cooking something I've gone on there for references almost every day. And there are like a lot of different variations of everything that people cook. So it's nice to see some different ideas of what other people make. Lots of inspiration on there. Pinterest is good too. I don't go on there too much. Well, I'm glad you're here then, because this is why I'm doing this stream, is to help people not be scared of cooking at home, just because eating out can get super expensive. It adds up really quick. Like most of the meals that I make here at home average out to about $5 per portion. Like that's the meat, the starch, the veg, everything. And like, think about when you go out to eat like you're spending at least 10 to 15 dollars just to have a meal so you will save a lot of money like i bet this jar of pesto is probably close to 10 dollars you could probably make this jar of pesto yourself for 
let's say five max. And it'll be more fresh, right? Okay, so these are like just starting to turn brown, which is perfect. And then we'll let those cool off a bit before we chop them up. I can do that. I can definitely start costing them out. It's not hard to do. I trained for it in school, so I should definitely use my skill. So we got just under three minutes left on our pasta. I want to check it. What's up, Mess Rob? It might be for you. It depends on what you say next. So this is still a little bit crunchy. So the next two minutes I think will be perfect. I'm going to try it again though. Just so we know. It should like just have a bite but not necessarily like stick to your teeth. Because that's what just happened. So that means it's still really starchy. It's too far. You're too far away, sir. So I usually just take the cost of like your protein, see how many like portions you divide it into. So those two chickens, I bought three chickens for $30 whole. So I use two. So let's say those cost $20 and you'll probably get six or seven meals out of that at least. That's awesome. Well, welcome to the stream then. We've had some crazy people in here already today. So then divide your chicken up between how many meals that you're going to make it. And then obviously, depending on how much your pasta costs, if you use the whole box, that'll be the easiest way to calculate it. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then same with your veg. So it's always good to keep your receipts to look back onto that. I mean, my boyfriend is the one, he's also a chef. He always does the calculations for me because honestly, I do hate math. So like I can ask him when we sit down to eat, I'll just tell him what everything costs and then he would divide that by like six or seven portions. And he'd be like, well, this meal costs like $5.40. And I was just like, what? So cheap. Okay, our timer is going off. So I'm gonna check this real quick. I guess that's why they made calculators for us, right? I am a chef, Miss Rob. I've been doing this for seven years and this is perfect, guys. It's not sticking to my teeth at all. But I'm not gonna pour out this water because I wanna cook the spaghetti next. So I'm just going to try and use this strainer to get it all out. And that way we don't have to wait for the pot to boil again. I've honestly never cooked pasta like this before, so... This is a new one for me. I'm just trying to use up a bunch of stuff from the pantry. Okay, we're good. It's 
So next thing I'm gonna do is just toss the pasta really quickly with a little bit of olive oil so it doesn't stick together. Nah, it was way better at eight. Mia, like way better. Yeah, England honestly had the most expensive food. I have to say that when I traveled there. And then I'm spreading that out on the pan right now so it stops cooking as fast as possible. If you just leave it in the pot on top of itself, it's gonna keep cooking because those noodles are still hot. So get as much surface area spread out as possible and then you're gonna keep your nice crunchy pasta. I did go to London, so four years ago now, I think. I did a little Europe trip for three months in the summer on my own. Had a blast, honestly just went there to eat a bunch and see some cool stuff. Okay, next thing. So let's read our spaghetti box. So this one says eight. So maybe we should do a minute less again and do it for seven. Yeah, it was really crazy. I remember I like didn't know any of the restaurants and I looked up a bunch to see like the price on their menu and Nando's like the chicken chain from America was like one of the cheapest places to eat for let's say healthy-ish food. So I ended up going there at one point. It's pretty hilarious. But I also did go out for some pretty awesome meals. I went out for schnitzel one time on my own. It was really good. I don't think that meal was super expensive. But the restaurant, I looked it up the other day and it's not even open anymore. Okay. Timer is going on. We're getting there, guys. So I got 13 minutes left on my timer for the ratatouille. Good luck, disaster. Hopefully she says yeah. And that looks like it's cooking up nicely. The ratatouille might need an extra 10 minutes. I was guessing it would take about half an hour just because I don't want it to get overcooked. I'd rather check it when it's undercooked and be able to adjust my timings that way than have it overcooked because you can't come back from that. That's right, you let them know. You say, hey girl. You're beautiful. You go out with me. I think food is cheaper here. I really do, especially, I mean, it doesn't make sense though because the UK does have quite a long growing season as well. Like I'm out on the West Coast on Vancouver Island and like we get a bunch of fresh vegetables all the way through the year just because our growing season is great. So maybe that's what keep, helps keep the prices down. And like, I would say meats, they probably come from America a lot of the time and that's why they're cheap because they're not really raised well, sad to say. But I have contacted a couple local farms. I heard back from a sheep farm today and they told me to come on by or just email them for pricing. They wouldn't tell me though in the message, so I don't know. But they do chicken and lamb there.
And then I don't know if there's really like any beef farms out here. That's probably more in Alberta. Maybe because like our terroir, our terroir is really different here. Like it's really rocky in a lot of places and you can't grow grass that easily, which is what cows like to eat. I don't know. There's not a ton of space. There's lots of mountains and water everywhere. So I'm gonna use this big nonstick pan for my chicken. Oh, I know Mia. I watched this really good show on Netflix. It's called Rotten and they don't just talk about meats. Like they also talk about garlic production. It is so beautiful. I love it out here. So yeah, Rotten on Netflix will give you a lot of insight into what actually happens in America. And you know what I'm going to do right now while we're waiting is just take out a little bit of that pasta water. So let's say I'll do a cup just in case I need a little bit extra. And then we're going to mix that in with our pasta and sauce later and it'll make everything really silky. Just I always find if I wait to take the pasta water out at the end, I always just pour it all down the drain. Okay, how's our timer? One minute. Like seriously, every time I'm like, okay, si save some pasta water. And then I pour it out and I'm like, really? See, even chefs make mistakes too. But that's how you learn. Because then you get so upset from making the same mistake over and over that you just never do it again. So here I am, breaking those barriers. Hey, let's check this. Still crunchy, guys. The spaghetti time was more accurate than the linguine time. That's right. Not every day is perfect, but you can try as long as you try. Okay, let's chop up these pumpkin seeds real quick. They're nice and cooled off now. I'm not gonna go super fine with these just because they are pretty small. Just give them a nice rough chop. That'll also release a lot of aroma that we built up from toasting them. why I love cooking so much though is just because every day is really different like your ingredients might look the same all the time but it does not mean that they always taste the same yes so Everything that I've made so far is all my own recipes. 
besides the baking a little bit. So I have everything written down in a little book and like throughout the last 12 streams, like I've already almost used up this whole book. So if you ever want recipes, let me know. And I think down the line, I'll probably end up doing a cookbook because I do love writing as well. Okay, pasta. The timer went off. Let's check it again. I'm sure it's done. Eight minutes should be on point. Perfect. So now I can strain the water out of that pot because we're done with it. That's true, I should do an ebook. That's such a good idea. Honestly, I was so terrible with electronics before I started streaming. Like, it's really forced me to get a lot better with working with computers and stuff like that. I'm just going to toss the spaghetti with a little bit of oil as well. And then here's our beautiful pastas all mixed up together. Chilling over there, beautifully al dente, ready to be covered in some pesto sauce. And I have three minutes left on this ratatouille, so I think I'm gonna check it now, just to see if I can start cooking the chicken as well. That way everything can be done at the same time. It really is how you start out now. Like it kind of blows my parents' minds how I'm able to do this all the time. And like meet new people every day, make a ton of new contacts. Like the online community is definitely really supportive of each other. Even the trolls, they make you better, right? guys really really good I love how colorful this is so I'm just gonna test the veg with a paring knife to see how cooked it is at this point it's about three quarters of the way there <laughs> it's true so I tested the middle, obviously, because that's where it takes the longest to cook. I know it smells really good too, sorry. Who, like, who can invent smell vision for us? This is needed. Somebody do it. And I'm gonna put this back in 
for another 10 minutes. That way it'll get really nice and brown on top as well. And then all of the tomato sauce is just chilling in the bottom, kind of steaming the veg from there. So with that being 10 minutes left, I know that I can start the chicken breast because those will probably take about 10 minutes as well. And I'm going to put my pan on medium high here just so we can nicely brown the skin, but not burn it. <laughs> what are some of your other favorite cooking streams? Another good oil that I would use is coconut oil. I just don't want to mix up the flavors too much today. And we're gonna start the chicken breast skin side down as well. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna grab some parm out. Yeah, it's true. Uh, was Vader's in here when you were in here, Mia? Yeah, they were. Those two are awesome to watch when they're on, just so you know. I would definitely give them a follow as well. They do some pretty fun stuff on their stream. And then I'm also heating up my oil first in the pan before I put the chicken in. That will help it to not stick. And if you're wondering when you know the oil is ready or hot, it'll look kind of wavy in the pan, like kind of like it's dancing. That's when you know it's ready. So mine is doing that now. So I know I'm good to go. I'm just gonna grab a splash screen just in case it starts to get wild in here. You should always hear a really nice sizzle when you put it in the pan as well. I'm not doing it on super high. And that will be good to go. You can kind of see it in there. I mean, it shouldn't. We're turning it up pretty high at first, just so it gets a nice color. But if you feel like it's cooking too fast, then by all means, you can turn your heat down and then cook it low and slow for the rest. Meat does turn out like a lot juicier if you do cook it at a lower temperature. So 
So I could sear the top of the breast now and then turn down the heat when I flip them over. That's a good option. And I think I'm gonna garnish my pasta with some fresh basil today. Just because I don't have a fresh pesto. I want that really nice basil flavor. No, so there's a lot of different ways to cook, obviously. And then I always like to take a thermometer and temp my meat as well, just so I know that it's cooked perfectly. So they say chicken is usually cooked at 165, but if you take it off at 155 and let it rest for five minutes, it's gonna stay a lot juicier that way. Because those five or 10 minutes that you let it rest is gonna bring up the chicken to the temperature anyways, because there is a thing called carryover cooking. So your food always comes up a little bit in temperature once you take it out, especially if it has a bone in it. So I just have a little digital thermometer here. Those are browning up nice and slow. I'm gonna get my basil out right now. <laughs> Sorry, Larson. Wish I could send it to you nice and fresh. So we need smell-o-vision and food teleportation in our lives. Mia, I'm gonna show you a little trick for chopping basil. <laughs> All of you guys are staying up so late and now I'm giving you the munchies. I sure hope it is JT. I always watch the Food Network when I was younger. I think that's why I love cooking now so much. Like I grew up with Martha Stewart and Emeril on TV. So these leaves are huge by the way. I don't know where they came from, but they are organic. So I always lay the biggest leaf down first. I love Food Network. And then layer your other leaves on top and then put the smallest ones in the middle there. And then you're just gonna roll the small ones up into the middle. And then you kind of have like a little cigar, let's say. And then I always start from the stem end and then just chop it really nice and fine. And then that helps to keep it in place. And you can easily control the thickness that you cut. Bam. And that's called shift and nod. So it's really nice and thin strips of herbs. And this chicken is sizzling up. I gotta check it guys. I think we're good. Beauty.
I can tell my pan isn't centered because these two are not browning at the same. So I just had to move it over a bit there. It was so easy. Thank you, Jay the Brickster, for the follow. Appreciate it. One more closer to my goal. And Rush, what is up, my man? You came in at the perfect timing. Everything's just coming together right now. Except this camera is way too high. So that was my timer for the ratatouille. That's been cooking for 40 minutes. Let's give this a look-see here. It's bubbling up really nice. that a close-up action. So all my veg is for sure cooked. And I have my nice bed of tomato sauce in the bottom there. So honestly, that's going to be fine if I just cover it now while I finish the pasta off. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Quidlo, thank you for the follow. Love you. It is. You guys are all in here at the perfect time. So this is getting covered. And that's going to go away so I can make room on the stove for my pasta pan. And I was actually going to put sun-dried tomatoes in the ratatouille today, but I totally forgot. So that's a little pointer for you guys as well. It would just add like a little extra richness and sweetness. Okay, pop the pan. I'm using all of the large things today. No problem, Vaders. Hope you have a great sleep and a great day tomorrow. Maybe I'll see you for Thirsty Thursday. So I'm gonna be doing a sake cured whole salmon that I'm gonna stuff with herbs and lemon and bake and also scalloped potatoes and some lemony asparagus if you so desire to watch that. So I can actually put my pesto into this pan now because we're just going to slowly heat it up and then add a little bit of pasta water, mix in our noodles and then plate that. Bye, Vaders. <laughs> I'm gonna do like three really good spoonfuls for that. And I want to temp my chicken right now. So I'm gonna do the biggest piece in the pan. and also the leg. So go by the bone in the middle there because that will be the coldest part. Everything is around 110 degrees. So we're gonna bring it up to 155. So we have a little bit. I know Rush, we're so close. Bruner Bear, thank you for the follow. I finally got all of my notifications working today as well. So 
So chicken should be done within the next, I would say, six to ten minutes for sure. And then I'll pull that off, let it rest for five before I slice it. And then while that rests, I can plate up my pasta and ratatouille and then put the chicken on top. Now we wait patiently. And I don't know if you guys have this over in Europe, but it's Bell Let's Talk Day. So if you post anything online, hashtag Bell Let's Talk, and they donate five cents for everyone that does that to anyone with mental illnesses. So that'll go towards research and stuff, which is great. <laughs> Sounds good, Rush. You're awesome. the best. I'm going to move that over here. Do I even need that? Or can I just put it on the stone? What do you think? What do you think about it? Yeah. Flying oven mitt. Yeah. Magic. You found me, Mia. I'm here. I'll teach you how to cook. Honestly, ask me anything. And if I don't know, well, then I'll make it my mission to find out for you. And I think these two pieces that are a little bit undercolored, I'm going to flip them over again just to crisp them up a little bit more. And same with the leg, because the other side's already nicely browned. Let's get a little check on this guy. So I think this one and this one are smaller. So they're almost done. One twenty five. We're getting close. I'm going to start the pasta in three minutes. I don't want to do it too early because if it sits with the sauce, then yes, it will get soggy as well. Pasta loves to soak up anything that it sits in, especially overnight. So one pointer as well. Uh, cilantro, I just do like more freehand. Same with parsley. I just go crazy and chop it up. Any way that you do it, it's always going to look like chopped grass <laughs> or gr grass clippings. Cilantro, no. Their stems are actually really delicate and do have a ton of flavor in there. So feel free to chop up the stems. Yeah, so good. Cilantro rice. But parsley, the stems are a little bit more tough. So I always like to take them off. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little spoonful of the pasta water now. And then I think I'm gonna use this spoon for the ratatouille, just so I can get a bunch of sauce on the plate as well at the same time. Oh no. Okay, so watch my episode yesterday actually. I made fried rice and I explained the whole way how to make like really nice fluffy rice. If you don't wanna watch the episode, it's called like the Indian method of making rice and you literally just like boil the heck out of it. You never turn it down to a simmer. And I also don't cover it either. Okay, let's check these babes again. I didn't cover it and then I also toasted the rice in the pot before I added the water so your kernels turn like a little bit opaque I know, it's so thick, the thickest. We got thick and thirsty Thursday tomorrow. The boys always challenge me. And I'm supposed to be making a black forest cake tomorrow as well. So we're gonna see how that goes. <laughs> Maybe I'll start at like two instead of three. I know, you have to watch that one. So my boyfriend is German or half German and his mom taught me on my birthday one time how to make black forest cake, like the traditional way. And she gave me like a huge bottle of Kirsch that their family made. It's so good. There's a lot of alcohol in that cake. And honestly, you don't even taste it. It's, it's kind of scary. But yeah, chocolate and cherries and whipped cream is like the greatest combo. Okay, let's check this pie again. One forty-five ish. Ten degrees left. Yeah, I love tiramisu too. I actually had a tiramisu on one of the menus at a restaurant I worked at. I made it up and I called it beer masu because I soaked the chocolate lady fingers that I made in a stout espresso sauce. It was super good. Anything creamy and chocolatey though is delicious. Okay, so chicken is close. We're about 10 degrees away. So I'm gonna turn this pasta pan onto low. Just to start to heat up that pesto. Yeah. I've been told I am really creative with my flavors. I love to play around a lot. 
but I do love like cookbooks and stuff like that so I have a pretty good like little food bank up here and plus the more things you eat the more flavors that you remember and then you can just think about how they would combine and maybe you try it and it doesn't work but you never know if you don't try <laughs> that's hilarious one of these days I'm gonna do something like terribly wrong on the stream and it's gonna be great I'm gonna try out this little bag Okay, final tenth is going down in the biggest one. Okay, we are good. That pan is off now. And I'll take those out in just a sec. I'm just gonna put them onto my cutting board so that they can rest there and then I can cut them up really easily. I'm happy you're here. You are great to chat to. Do you have like Instagram or anything like that? So maybe I can find you on social media. Here's our awesome chicken. That's the bottom. Nicely golden brown. Let's get some of this like steam action in there. We're almost there. This guy is just starting to bubble up. And I don't really know how much cheese is in that pesto that's pre-made but i did keep the pan on low heat just in case it wanted to stick to the bottom but so far we're good so i'm probably gonna add quite a bit of parm into the mix once it's all heated up and this chicken i'm gonna cook after the stream Fun, Mia. I'll go find you after. I was thinking about doing a couple of gaming streams as well earlier on in the day just so I can catch all you Europeans earlier on. you can see just by covering it in oil nothing is stuck together at all and you still have all of that starch in there instead of rinsing it off tiger thank you for the follow appreciate you Hi. <laughs> 
Give this a nice stir. Just for salt. I know I already seasoned the pasta. But there might be salt in the pesto. And that is honestly perfect. So I salted my water enough that the pasta is already seasoned. And I don't have to add any more seasoning. So that actually worked out perfectly. I'm gonna turn this pan up just a bit. And then maybe add just a little bit extra pasta water to bring everything together. And we're almost there guys. So my personal preference for pans is cast iron. I just got into those the last couple of years because they are so expensive. So you definitely have to save up for them, plan them out well in advance, and then always look for a sale. So my big blue pan that I did the ratatouille and that's a stob. What up om dog? How are you today? So that's a stob pan. I have never bought a Le Creuset just because they are so expensive and stobs are the same quality and usually about half the price. So keep that in mind. That pan I got for I think $150 and it was regular $450. So always just watch for sales on those and then snatch them up because they are literally the greatest thing. They do take a little bit of effort to keep like seasoned, I guess. But once you do that, nothing should stick to them. Like I can fry an egg in there and it will just pour out. Okay, pasta's hot, we are good. Just gonna slice up one of these chickens here. I'm gonna turn this down just so you can watch me slice, guys. I go a little bit on the bias. Om dog, thank you for the donation. Everyone's saying this dinner looks fantastic, so hopefully I pull it off. I know, so now I have like, I think four cast iron pans. I have blue, I have a green enamel one that I like to do my bread in with a lid. It's an oval one. And I have a red, just regular frying pan and then an orange sauce pot. Holy, I think I cooked this chicken perfectly, guys. I'll bring it up to the can just so you can see. But like your chicken should be juicy like that. Hopefully it focuses. So I took that off at 150 and let it rest that whole time. And it's still steaming hot. So you don't have to be afraid of it cooling off too much. Sounds good, Rush. Thanks for popping in. Always love seeing you in here. I'm just about to plate up though, so that's bad timing. <laughs> so I'm going 
going to do a nice layer of the ratatouille on the bottom of my plate. And then if you want, just spoon your tomato sauce over the veg. It's going to be very rustic looking. And then take a little bit of your pasta and just twist it around the tongs. That's how all the chefs get their beautiful plating. If you don't have enough the first time, do it again. Can we see here? I'm just going to move a couple of things over, guys. Don't need that. Don't need this. And then just kind of fan your chicken out over the dish. I piled my pasta really high, so it's kind of just gonna drape over. Like a so. And then I'm just gonna grab my garnishes real quick. So I'm gonna do cheese first, just so it starts to melt a little bit. And then my beautiful pumpkin seeds. And then let's get some of our fresh basil on there. And then if you want to bump it up even further, you can grab some balsamic glaze. This one's pre-done. So let's see <laughs> how fast it comes out. And there we are. That is dinner, guys. So, so good. And that sauce on the bottom of the plate is just gonna pair with the spaghetti so well. So I'm gonna turn up the cam now, and I always do like a little taste test before I go off. Cause yeah, food can look good, but it doesn't mean that it tastes good, right? What? I didn't even see it. Mrs. Rush, thank you for the follow. Woohoo! We made it. You guys, I'm only like three weeks in. That's amazing. Okay, so a little piece of chicken. I'm just gonna cut it off. But the key is to keep your chicken, if it has skin on, out of the sauce, just so it stays nice and crispy. So chicken's going in. Mm. Yahtzee, I'll bring it over to the camera for you real quick. I'm just eating everything right now. You know me. So that was our end result. I just spooned whatever sauce was in the bottom of the pan over the veg when I plated it. I'm gonna go in for some pasta now. Our pesto spaghetti. Yum. It's really good with the fresh basil. So I would always make pesto from scratch if you have the chance, guys. It's just so much better. Now I'm just gonna taste the zucchini from our ratatouille here. 
So good. Okay, so ratatouille. 40 minutes in the oven if you're doing two layers at 400 Fahrenheit. The chicken took, I think, about 12 to 15 minutes in a medium high pan. And then our pasta's cooked for eight minutes, boiled. So that's all this, the timings that you guys will need to make it. And guess what? I forgot the ricotta. Because it's chilling in the fridge. But that's okay, because it's a super soft cheese, so it's really easy to mix in to your dish. I usually just do little dollops of it. I'm gonna turn the cam back down just so you guys can see how it does look. See, chefs do mess up. I told you, Mia. So this has been strained for almost two hours now. And it's actually pretty dry already, but that's gonna mix in so well with all the ratatouille sauce. So if you wanna just put like little nubs of it all over the plate, and then mix it in after. That would be delicious. Nubs. Like a so. <laughs> okay, so there's our real plate up. <laughs> Dog it. Dog meat. Posh, you want some cheese? No, she has to do a cheese snack first. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stay. She really likes to have snacks with me in the kitchen. Ah! <laughs> but she's my taste tester. If she doesn't eat it, well, then no one should, right? <laughs> Okay guys, that is the finished plate. Thank you, Yahtzee. I can't believe I made it already. I'm being told to do a shot with you guys right now for a celebration. So hold tight for a sec. Shot, shot, shot. The little wee one. Because why not? So I'm doing rum chata. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. So it's rum with like cream and cinnamon and such. Kind of a play on like Mexican horchata. I love that rice drink. Cheers, guys. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Super pumped. Yum. All right. I'm going to go before this dinner starts to get cold. And I also have some hungry folks waiting here. So thank you so much for all of the follows and chatting with me all day. I usually stream for like a good two to three hours every day. I am on again tomorrow, Tiger. So my schedule is Sunday to Thursday. And I usually start around 3 p.m. PST. See you tomorrow for sure, Mia. Hope you have a good sleep. You should definitely go to bed now. I know it's late for you. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great night. Love you all.